Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Julian and Nick, for putting together uh, this uh, uh, amazing session. So, um, in the last few years, I've been studying the calcolytic wall enclosures from the Iberian Peninsula as living architectures to understand architecture as something that emerges during habitation and through use, a lot in line with Leslie McFadden's work. In this sense, I have tried through the small scale analysis of the detail to approach the lines of the historical process that allowed the emergency of the context under study and which through them were consolidated. Today, I intend to go a step further and think of architecture as being made alive and vibrant through the process of construction. In this, in this sense, I will focus my analysis on the walls of the archaeological site of Castanheir do Vento. These, these devices, far from being understood as inert and passive, are the devices that create the conditions for life to occur and are somehow themselves alive. I am to show how the how the, the, the walls of Castanheir do Vento bring together the life of an entire territory where different times of life and the outer life interact as veins, courses of life that survive human and animal life, and by that very reason guarantee the survival of generations to follow. The walls are the entities that allow the community to remain alive. These walls bring together human beings, animals and things and activate networks of diverse relationships and interactions at different paces. And through these processes, they become alive themselves. First, let me briefly introduce the site of Castanheira do Vento. It is a walled enclosure with a broad chronology, but with great construction and intensive use around 2500 BC. The site is located on a hilltop at an altitude of 730 meters, and its, as, and its site plan is defined by three lines of walls intersected by 19 entrants, which delimits the uh, inner precinct. The inner precinct and the areas between walls are punctuated by structures of circular tendency with different diameters. More than 40 structures have been identified until now. And the walls would have been built of earth, embracing clay soil and tree branches. Castanheira do Vento was built, inhabited and used over hundreds of years. And these constructions create diverse temporal relationships. Far from this archaeological drawing representing an original architectural plan, it is the result of accumulated experiences of inhabitation involving a continuous process of construction and use. Castanheira do Vento is part of a territory where similar architectural forms were probably built synchronously. It shares the territory with other walled enclosures uh, that are marked in red in the map and Castanheira is marked with a blue dot along with sites identified as dwelling places and sites with rock art, among others. But although not a unique site in the territory, it is a particular site, singular and with singularities, and I would like to say with exceptional uses. Castinger do Vento was not a dwelling site, but was continuously inhabited. Today, I propose to focus on the walls of this particular and singular walled enclosure, and I intend to follow the walls to approach the architecture of the site as living architecture. And I will do that through fragments, fragments that are not exceptional cases, but the constructive paradigm at Castanheira do Vento. So the first fragment is located on the inner side of the north wall that makes up Bastion D. Integrated in the stone foundation, two fragments of cattle bone were identified, possible from the same young animal, in articulation with a ceramic fragment and a granite burnstone. Fragments of an animal, a fragment of a ceramic vase, and a fragment of the agricultural territory, of territories of transformation and consumption, were embedded in the wall. They were part of its body. Giving life to the wall, in the wall they activated another life with reference to the territory, 
to what was and is. The relation of these elements and the slabs of schist guarantee through the wall, in the wall, the survival of the things of the hearth. The second fragment is part of passage number two, where an engraved schist slab was identified. It is a fragment from a larger panel. These motifs would have had a long diachrony in the region since the Epipaleolithic. This fragment, whose engravings could have been etched thousands of years earlier, integrated the construction of an entrance in wall number one, and like the animal bones presented previously, without visibility after the position. The slab is in the doorway with the engraved side facing outwards. However, the narrow, narrow opening, about 65 centimeters, would not allow the engravings to be seen, and the outer faces of the wall in the doorway would have been plastered with earth or clay. These motifs are not on exhibition, but are immersed. They are part of the body of the wall, of the site, uh, and they would have called upon other spaces, the spaces of the engraved panels and other times, thus connecting the memory of the territory with the construction of something new, that is, the enclosure of Castanheira do Vento itself. It brings with it, with it the life of other rock formations and other rhythms and spaces walked or imagined. This fragment lives and gives life, life to a new body, which creates and structures itself in relation to what already existed and in relation to future expectations. This constant movement of the territory living in and through the walls of the site is also evident in the fallow fragment. The third fragment is an assemblage of one loom weight, two fragmented granite quernstones and slabs of schist. The loom weight and the pieces of granite were part of the construction of the outer wall of Castanheira do Vento along with the schist slabs. The assembling of the granite, clay and schist invokes the same materials of which the site is made. These elements integrated into the wall are part of it. They are architectural elements and the wall as an element that is woven through actions of the position is part of the practice of the position itself. The different raw materials, the clay and granite, were reshaped, worked and transformed into loom weights and cornstones. And after use, they were placed together with cheese slabs for construction, shaped from the local bedrock in the making of the wall, once again invisible. Once again, as elements that make part and are the body of the site. The fourth fragment brings forward the intentional closure of some entrances as accentuating the permanent construction of the site that progressively moved towards closing the spaces. The construction, the constructed device itself, the three walls, promote the progressive closing of the enclosing of the site. The closure of each entrance was structured for, most, for the most part, respecting the alignment of the wall. The closure concealed the passage, giving continui continuity to the layout of the wall. From the context interpreted as intentional closure of entrance four, three cattle bones were, fragments were identified, two of them corresponding to uh, unburned molars. These two elements present different levels of weathering, which could indicate different contexts and exposure times of these elements before their incorporation in the final deposit. In the context of the closure of entrance six, two unburnt molars were collected, one from cattle and the other from an, an unidentified herbivore. In the context, of the closure of entrance seven, nine faunal elements were recovered, including two cattle bone fragments, uh, one fragment from a, a red deer, one from a sheep or goat, and another one from pig or boar. The great majority of the animal bones identified at the entrances allow the identification of the species, 
which contrasts with the numbers resulting from the analysis of the whole sa uh, sample of osteological elements, where only 5% of the set collected in Castanheiro do Vento allow the identification of the species due to the high fragmentation of the osteological remains, most of them being burned. In the closing context of the entrances, the presence of bovine animals is also no, uh, noteworthy. However, and given the general distribution of animal species identified at the site, the most represented species uh, on the site is the pig or boar. Therefore, the identification of bovine remains accompanies the interpretation of the careful deposition of selected things at the time of closing the passages. These animals, or bones of these animals, by being integrated into the walls of Castanheiro do Vento, by being placed in relation with specific sets of things, would activate other networks of connection and signification. They could have brought with them the structures of domest domesticated animal care, the cycle time of breeding and the seasonality of birds, and strategies of consumption and storage, and of preservation and multiple uses of bone fragments as a constructive and constructive constitutive matter of the site. Until now, I have only presented the stone base or foundation of the walls, the infrastructure that today delimits the space. The upper part of the wall would have been built in a kind of earthen architecture in a relationship between clayish soil and wood. The construction of earthen buildings is also rhythmic or it's seasonal. It cannot be done in the rainy season or when the weather is very dry. It requires maintenance, constant repair and attentive care. It involves the mixture of earth and water, manual molding and the insertion of organic and inorganic matter. The molding of the walls will be interspliced with tree branches. In Castanheiro do Vento, cork oak, alm oak, juniper and cistus were detected. The trees growing in this territory were brought to the site and mixed with the ground, the substrate, the soil and the schist. And these walls would have been in permanent decay and eventually would have, have collapsed and meshed themselves with the ground floor, the earth to the earth. To conclude, the walls of Castanheir do Vento, as an organism, and uh, inspired by Julian Thomas, I don't know if he agrees or not with me, but uh, as an organism, integrates parts of other organisms that live and share different rhythms. Fragmented things, animals and other beings with their own dynamics entered in the network of active relationships that in turn activate other connections and other lives. With these fragments of latent lives, walls and other constructions were interwoven, allowing new lives to emerge. And the wall becomes all these lives and rhythms. The territory is interwoven with the walls, the world fits into them, and as organisms that contain within themselves other lives and different rhythms of life, they endure and survive human life. The territory is in the walls in the same way as the walls are in the territory, as they are immersed in the world that is simultaneously translated and generated through them. The animal bones, the engraved stone, the pottery and the granite quern stones in the walls, making up the walls themselves, transferable and translatable in character, were and are the conditions of a living architecture. Walls are crossed by the world and also run through it. The architecture of Castanheiro do Vento is living architecture. It is in movement. It is an organism that will survive us. Thank you.